What is the best Paradox game? I can already hear the Paradox players arguing in the comments section. A lot of people I'm sure would say Victoria 2, one of Paradox's smaller games that has garnered attention in recent years, especially now with its sequel, hopefully coming out in 2022. Some people think Victoria 2 is the best game because of its complexity and the focus on country building. Some other people would say Europa Universalis 4, particularly on this channel, since a lot of people have thousands of hours in the game. The unique assets of colonisation, and tons of flavour added to it, gives people a reasonable argument for saying it's the best paradox game. The truth is though, you can define the best game on so many different levels, and people are never going to come to a consensus on the best paradox game. So in this video, I want to examine which paradox game is the best based on a number of different categories, which will be active player base, initial sales, product lifecycle, and general positivity. When deciding the best Paradox game, there is generally so much to take into account. I just hope I don't anger too many people, and see people with pitchforks outside my house if I didn't choose their favourite game. If I do face a mob tomorrow however, why not make my day a little brighter, since 60% of you who watch our content aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you like Paradox content, make sure to hit that button. Right, let's get into this. We begin by discussing one aspect that makes a successful game, which is having an active player base over time. A lot of games you see today, although initially do well at launch, gaining a significant amount of sales, and a lot of people playing it for the first day, its replayability may be limited, and so people get bored relatively quickly. Two examples I can think of where this has happened is firstly Humankind, going from 55,000 active players, which is one of the highest on Steam at the time, to, as I make this video, which is 3 months after its initial launch, to 2,200 players. This is less than Crusader Kings 2, a game that hasn't been updated in years due to its sequel coming out, so you can therefore see this quite shocking drop in active players. And although it's inevitable the active player base will decrease after launch, most games tend to retain more of their player base. Now looking solely at Paradox games over the last decade, it's clear to me a number of Paradox games have taken the top spot. In 2021 and 2020, Hearts of Iron 4 has dominated other Paradox games, and has kept up a far higher active player base, gaining popularity over time in comparison to other games. Before 2020, in the years between 2016 and 2019, it's been a bit of a toss-up between the top games, which include Europa Universalis 4, Stellaris, and City Skylines. Ultimately though, Hearts of Iron 4 has reached a new level of an active player base, and perhaps it could be argued that it beats the other games in this category, since none of the other games have consistently gotten 20,000 average active players every month. What do you guys think though? Does having the most active player base suggest it's the best game? Or is it because something like World War II is a really relevant period of history to modern day, with some people still alive today living during that time? The second aspect I want to talk about is how many sales each Paradox game has generated, which you could argue, from a game developer's perspective, makes it the best game. According to Steam Spy, Paradox have been able to get 8 games over a 2 million mark for copies sold. City Skylines is by far the most successful game in this category, getting 6 million copies sold by 2019. It probably has a far larger demographic it can gain, and perhaps took market share out of the SimCity franchise. It should be noted though, that the games have come out in different years, and this needs to be taken into account. Another thing to note is that Crusader Kings 3 was the fastest game to reach 1 million copies sold, and has the highest number of peak players at launch with over 90,000. No other Paradox game has come close to those numbers, and maybe you could even say Crusader Kings 3 is the most accessible. The final game I want to touch on in this category is Stellaris. Unlike most of the other games, Stellaris may be seen as really successful given the expectations that were had of it. Skyfire strategy games were not a well established market at the time in comparison to the other games, and expectations were low with limited predecessors before it. Solaris, regardless of its limitations, was able to thrive and gain millions of copies sold, equaling to a certain extent some of Paradox's other flagship games. I have to say, it's impressive how some of these games over years have grown, and you could make the case for even one of these games in this category, and therefore concluding either one of these is the best Paradox game. 
What do you guys think though? Do you agree with me? So finally, I want to talk about a range of smaller categories, starting with individual countries. In 2019, a map was produced outlining which countries search for each game the most. Now, although it's a little outdated, it's still relevant today. People in Eastern Europe tend to search for Hearts Ryan 4 the most, perhaps because a lot of the countries today are in the game, like Hungary or Czechoslovakia. Observing the map closer though, Greece goes against the norm and prefers to search for EU4. Maybe this is the case because they can play as Byzantium in a really interesting scenario, since they're about to collapse to the Ottoman Empire. Another interesting thing to acknowledge is that some Anglo countries search for Stellaris the most. Perhaps people are more interested in space in these countries, or because it's on console, which tends to be played more in these countries. To me it's interesting that even the country you're from may have some sort of impact on which Paradox game you play. Perhaps it's impossible to judge which Paradox game is the best, and is based on your preferences as a person. Someone who's into World War II would certainly like Hearts of Iron 4, and someone who enjoys reading about medieval kings would probably believe Crusader Kings 2 or Crusader Kings 3 is the best Paradox game. Even if you're not interested in history, science or architecture, there's probably a Paradox game out there for you that you enjoy the most and consider it the best game. So finishing off, what do I think the best Paradox game is? For me personally, I'd have to say Crusader Kings 2, which is the first Paradox game I played in 2012. It's always been fun to play as an English Count and try to become the head of a satanic society, or duel everyone you see. The stories you get from the game almost felt unlimited at times, particularly with the DLCs. However, I hold Europa Universalis 4 quite highly, given the fact it's grown our channel significantly in the recent year, and I've gotten a lot better at it having some wacky campaigns. I'd also put Hearts of Iron 4 at third. Given the war mechanics are really fun, and you can play with lots of interesting different countries, hopefully with a new Hearts of Iron 4 DLC, no step back. It's about to get a lot more interesting with the Soviet Union being updated. What do you guys think though? Do you agree with my analysis of the games? Or do you think I've missed something entirely? like Victoria 2's population system, making it the best Paradox game by far. Let me know in the comments below, and thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully if the YouTube gods allow it, I'll see you next time. Thank you guys for watching, goodbye for now.